Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to MLS Journeyman with Zebu Nation. Now, today we have something a little bit different, a little bit special. We have our very first game as head coach of Team USA. If you recall, in our last little special breaking news episode, Greg Berhalter stepped down as USA head coach, put our name in the hat for uh you know the job and we got it so i don't you know i actually declared like publicly for the job i don't know how much that helped but it seemed to help it got me a little in trouble with the board the board wanted me to explain myself and say like are you going to quit what's happening and i told them no i'm going to do both jobs and they were fine with that but like after i after i put it out there publicly there seemed to be some groundswell like you know the media came around they're saying like the fans think you're the number one choice that kind of stuff so who knows who knows if that helped but i got the job so you can't say it didn't help i guess anyway um burl halter quit in the middle of world cup qualifying really at the end of world cup qualifying two games left to go and it seemed like we're in pretty good form to qualify so we got today's game versus Costa Rica. We can take a look at the stages here. So we're in the qualifying round. Mexico has already qualified with 17 points after eight games played. Two games left. USA, 14 points. Costa Rica, 13. Jamaica, 12. Honduras, 8. So as long as we don't lose both games, we're in in some capacity, right? Jamaica should, could sneak up and force us into the playoffs. But, you know, if a, all we need is one draw or one Honduran loss, and we're in at least the playoff, the fourth place position. Other than that, you know, Costa Rica and Jamaica are right on our heels, one and two points back. But you look at our opponents for the next uh, two games, we've got Costa Rica and Jamaica. So fate is in our own hands. No question about it. We win these two games, we're in. I think a win and a draw, and we'll secure at least third place because we'll have beaten at least one of these two teams that's ahead of us or behind us. So they couldn't catch up mathematically. They couldn't, right? Yeah. Anyway, um, that's the goal. That is the goal. Now, we called up a squad. A little bit controversial. We left off some older players, some veterans, some star players. Basically, it went for guys who were fit at the time of selection. Unfortunately, there was like a three-week break that you saw in MLS, and some of our players are no longer fit. And that's a little disturbing, but we've got a pretty... A fairly fit team. Uh, now nah, let's look at the tactics. Let's look at the tactics and go down the roster. Oh, can we do a team report? I've never done a team report. Hey, we can look at a team report. Um, depth chart. How about this? How about team's depth chart? Look at this. No, I don't. That's that's not Team USA. That's not Team USA at all. There we go. So you can see it's an interesting team. We got a very young midfield going on here. We got an interesting group of defenders. Got some older players up front. Bobby Wood, Josie Altador. Going to be our number one strikers. Uh, there we go. There's depth chart. Um, for the rest of the strikers and the rest of the guys up front, I wanted versatile players. I wanted guys who can play attacking midfielder or striker, or in some places even midfielder, because we might be switching formations. We might be going from the 4-4-2 to the 4-2-3-1. So I wanted players who could do both of those things. Why is Zardes? Zardes is not on this roster. I don't know. Something's happening here. Take a look at our tactics. Right? I'm not crazy. Yeah. Zardes is not on the roster. Okay, so we'll look at it this way. So these are our starters, our reserves. We got Tyler Miller, and Bill Amid on the bench. You might notice a goalkeeper missing, and um, you know he just wasn't he just wasn't fit, just was not fit. 
So I left him off. Same with um, Michael Bradley. Michael Bradley was not fit. He's a little old. You know, we decided to go another direction. So we left two big players off the list. But I think the rest of these guys can do the job. Um, Sebetchu's the one sort of question mark there, 25 years old. I kind of forgot he was on the roster. I was looking around at some other guys to maybe put on the roster, but he was already there. And he sort of snuck in under the wire. But he's, you know, he's a good player, big physical guy, 16 jumping reach, can play striker, right wing, a little bit of left wing, uh, attacking center mid. He's a decent player. He snuck on there. It's it's fine. Uh, Wea, another promising youngster, 21 years old. Again, look at the versatility. Left, right, center, striker. He can go all over the place. Uh, Julian Green. Again, look at the versatility on this guy. He can play midfield, advanced midfield, striker. He can do it all. He's very aggressive. Uh, you know, he and he's fit. He he's match fit, hundred percent. So called him up. He's he's okay. I would have preferred a couple of other guys, but they just were not fit. Paul Ariola got injured just after I called him up, but he wasn't injured so badly that I could drop him. Unfortunately, we did have one injury and I was forced to call somebody up, but Are Areola was not eligible to be replaced for whatever reason. But again, versatility, play all down the right hand side, left hand side. He's pretty good. Hindeman in the midfield can play all up and down the midfield, defensive midfielder, central mid, attacking mid. Another good young prospect, 25 years old, great positioning, vision, fitness. He's a good player. Keaton Parks. Now he's very similar, very similar type player, 24 years old, play all up and down the center of the field. Nick Lima, another versatile guy, left back or right back. He's a real sort of spark plug. Um, you know, he's not the greatest player in the world, but he's just a guy who brings some intensity to the team. So brought him along. Had to make a choice at central defender. We had like four... Actually, we had six central defenders to choose from, and I was only going to keep four of them. So we went with Aaron Long and Justin Glad. Unfortunately, Glad lost all of his match sharpness, but Long is still looking okay. Long is just a physical, you know, he's a mobile dude, 16 pace at the uh, defensive center back. He's only six foot one, but that pace makes up for a lot of errors. He's also a good tackler, good at heading, you know, leadership. So he's, you know, he's an important player for us. Justin Glad, another rising young defensive star. Great tackling, great heading again. Another pacey guy. Another. He's only six foot one again, but he's got that pace um, to keep up with just about anybody. Uh, and then the reserve that we brought in was Kellen Acosta after the injury. And again, Acosta, he can play anywhere. Anywhere on the pitch, basically. Left back, right back, defensive mid, central mid, left wing, right wing. He can play all over the place. And he's just, you know, again, not a great player. And he lost his match sharpness during the three-week MLS break. So I was not happy about that. But the versatility got him on the team. So that's the reserves. We'll take a look at the starters after the match preview. Today's matchup, Costa Rica. We are the five to four favorites playing at Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City, Kansas. Breezy 50 degrees, so it'll be a little bit cold for the boys from Costa Rica, but not so cold that it'll make a huge difference. Uh, recent form is a bit inconsistent for both teams. We got three wins and two losses. They've got three losses and two wins. Uh, USA is 1-0 and against them in this competition, I suppose. Other than that, not a lot to talk, to talk about. Let's see. Ronald Ronald Gonzalez, 51-year-old Costa Rican. Uh, yeah, so he was the interim head coach. Before that, he was a head coach at Comunicaciones Suppressa. You know, so he's had uh, you know, a good run of coaching down there in Costa Rica. He's a, he's a fine coach. No problems there. Great man management. Good man management anyway. Um the rest of him is just sort of serviceable. That's fine. That's fine. We are five to four favorites. Let's go. Let's get this under 
way. So we are going to go with the 4-4-2 possession style. So we're going to sort of keep it in the Burl Halter sort of uh, tactics, I guess you'd say. At least for now. We're not going to make drastic changes and go to our attack style. Our Inter-Miami attack style. But we'll see how they do. We'll see how they do with this more possession style. So here's our starting lineup. We got Gutman at the left back. I don't know where this guy came from. Andrew Gutman. 7.75 million is what his value is. Playing for Celtic, I think. Yeah, he's playing for Celtic. He was on the team when I took over. So I was like, let's take a look at this guy. And he's decent. You know, um, three stars. He doesn't really have a ton of holes in his game. He's decent physically, decent mentally. Good leadership. Decent crossing, tackling, marking, heading. You know, he's okay. I guess heading is sort of his weak area. But he's six foot tall as a fullback. That's pretty good. Like I said, I'd never really heard of this guy. But he was on the team, so why not give him a shot? And then Brooks and Cameron Carter-Vickers. Brooks is taking the captain's armband, 28 years old. He's a beast, six foot four. Pace, strength, jumping, reach, marking, tacking, tackling, passing even. He's a good passer out of the backfield, so he can do some, some good stuff for us. Cameron Carter-Vickers, we're familiar with him. Played against him many times in MLS these days. He's three starts, 6.8 rating. So Gino Dest taking over that right fullback spot. Hasn't played tremendously, so he might be up for replacement. We got some good young uh, American fullbacks, including our own guy at uh, Inter Miami. So... You know, he's, his spot might be up for grabs. Boyd on the left. I would have preferred a couple of other guys, but they just weren't really fit. So we got Tyler Boyd, Tyler Adams in the midfield. He has played okay. Seven starts, two assists, 6.93 rating. He's nearly suspended, though. He's a bit of a destroyer in the midfield. Teaming him up with Weston McKinney, sort of the engine of the team. The guy, is, he's a real spark plug again. Six appearances, two goals, one assist, 7.3 rating. He has played very well. Uh, Pulisic, of course, on the right. Not, not going to go anywhere without Christian. Three goals, one assist, 7.03 rating as well. And then I told you about the strikers up top. Bobby Wood, only one goal in eight appearances. Three starts. Hasn't played particularly well. Josie Altidore, only two appearances, no goals. So we could have some problems in the goal scoring uh, area, but we shall see. Costa Rica's got a pretty decent side. Navas, we all know him. He's a great, great keeper. He does have nine concessions in eight games, though. So, I mean, that's pretty good. It's not tremendous. It's not outstanding. But it's it's good enough for Costa Rica to win some games. Uh, Matarita on the left. Ian Smith on the right. Uh, Calvo and Duarte, two pretty good defenders. Even a goal for Duarte. Calvo got the captain's armband. Borges and Guzman. I, I feel like I know these guys because I played them so much. I played so much international uh, football in FM19 with Team Canada. I feel like I know all these guys. Ramirez on the left. David Ramirez. Six appearances. Another Celtic player. Don't know a lot about this guy. He can play left, right, or striker. How's he been doing? No, he does not play Celtic. Cyprus. Omonia in Cyprus. They just got a similar logo. Huh. Last year, he had 34 appearances, 11 goals, 10 assists. That's pretty good. Take that. Uh, Arania in the middle. Eight appearances, one goal. Campbell on the right. Four goals for Joel Campbell. 29 years old. Costa Rican. Who's he playing for? Atalanta. Not Atlanta, but Atalanta. Italy, right? I think. Yeah, Italy. Syria. Okay. So he's uh you know, he's got a pedigree there. And of course, big Myron George. We know all about this guy from playing against him. Team Canada. Six foot two, sixteen strength. He's a bull in front of net. Gotta watch out for big George. Alright. Let's go. Pep talk. We could secure qualification. Let's be let's be passionate. Let's secure FIFA qualification. Oh, they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it. Come on, boys. Let's get to the tunnel. You're not going to listen to me. Let's just get to the tunnel. 
You take charge of your first match, Team USA. Zach Morgan, the American soccer informer, experienced with great respect. Uh, it's a special day. I can't wait. Will you look to attack here? Um, I hope so. Sure. We'll play with confidence. Tyler Boyd appears to be handed a role. He doesn't really suit him. Yeah, I'd agree with that, but he's versatile. He'll handle it. Pulisic will be pulling the strings in the midfield today. I mean, we certainly hope he can keep that form going. Yeah, sure. I mean, we need him to be a playmaker out there. Get the ball to our strikers and let them tap in a couple of easy ones. That would be lovely. Okay, here we go. First free kick, Pulisic. He's got the boys lined up. Sends it in. Cameron Carter-Vickers. No, Brooks is there for the finish. Wow, both, both of them were there. Either one of them could have finished that one, and Brooks gets the tap in. So there we go. Just like I said, Pulisic delivers it. Great ball in. Great run from Brooks. Seemed to be onside, but we'll check the replay. Is there replay? And there's no replay in World Cup qualifying. Get out. CONCACAF does not believe in replays. All right. So we're looking good. 27 minutes in. Starting to rain here in Kansas City. But it's not daunting Costa Rica just yet. They are on the attack. George to Urania. Big tackle. Oh, we already got a yellow card from Carter Vickers. And a shot just wide. Uh, I think we're going to have to... Um... It's Henderson's feedback. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Um... Yeah, that's fine. All right, we're going to have to take Carter Vickers out at half, I think. Got some tired boys all of a sudden. So that half went quick. I think if this keeps up, we'll be able to get in two games today. That might be ideal. Um, so, yeah, I want to get Cameron Carter Vickers out of there because we have a lot of really fine defenders, four guys who can basically are interchangeable. So we're going to bring Glad in there to get that yellow card out of there. The, the one thing that could derail us is going down to a, a 10 men or less. So we're going to get Carter Vickers out of there. He's not that much better than our reserve players. So let's be calm. Um, don't get complacent. All right. Who's this? Pulisic is stressed. Stressed? Um... I don't know. No pressure on you. No, he's even more stressed. Tell him there's no pressure and it stresses him out. Why isn't there pressure? There should be pressure. Okay, fine. Fine. Uh, Matarita. Yes, we'll close down on him. That's fine. Costa Rica, 51% of possession. It's not great for our possession style. Gutman with the throw in. Boyd. Here we go. He's going to switch field. No, he's just going to center it to McKinney, who is absolutely wide open. Weston McKinney. Go, get back outside. Nope. Oh, Tyler Adams, though, tries to get it to Boyd. Campbell with the big tackle. Borges. Costa Rica playing a bit cautious. Uh, we are putting pressure on him. Maybe we should drop back a bit, but, um, you know, we are sort of counter-pressing when maybe that's not the greatest idea. Here's Smith. Down the far sideline for Costa Rica. He gathers it in. Sends it across to George. Big man in front of the net. Gets the header. It's like I said. Maybe we should have dialed it back. But too late. Too late. Good ball forward. Smith outruns Gutman on the left. And then George just rises up. Easy goal. All right, fellas, let's not go down. Come on now. Come on now, don't, don't play with me here. Guzman to Campbell. Costa Rica looking to start the attack after the throw-in. Campbell covered there, but he dives inside, takes a left-footed shot. Horvath with the save. Good man. Good man, Ethan Horvath. Where are you at these days? 
Club Bruges. That's right. I just played against this guy. Played a friendly. You know, keep my to keep my guy sharp a little bit. We played a couple of friendlies with Inter Miami, and um, you know, we scored we scored a goal on him on Horvath, but it was like the 91st minute penalty kick. But other than that, he was pretty unscorable. Like he was a brick wall back there. Here's Gutman down this far sideline. Drops it off to Boyd. Boyd to Adams. Adams looking around. Centers to McKinney, who's forced back out wide. Has to drop it off to Adams. McKinney out wide to Gutman, who is wide open. He drops it to Boyd. Boyd in the box looking. Drops it to Tyler Adams with a shot. Oh, I thought that was going to be good. Thought that was going to be in the back of the net. But we just get a corner out of it. Far side. Pulisic, 75 minutes in the books. He sends it in. Can't get it to anybody. And here comes Matsurita on the counterattack. Down the near sideline. Covered there by Weston McKinney. A good foul. Let's just stop this nonsense in its tracks. Is anybody playing poorly? Boyd? Boyd is playing poorly. 86 minutes. Not a lot of time left. Who should we bring in on the left-hand side? Timothy Way? Paul Ariola? Uh Yeah, let's bring in Ariola. Bring Well, no, no, no. He's coming off an injury. What am I talking about? Can Way play there? Can, he's not really a midfielder. Who do we got who can play midfield? Um Kellen Acosta, perhaps. You know, he could he could play there. He could definitely play there. All right, we're bringing in Acosta. He's not super comfortable there, but uh, you know he could play there. Pulisic looks exhausted. That's no good. Horvath sends it forward. Ninety-one minutes. There's only four minutes of stoppage time going on here. There's Acosta at midfield. Oh. Sends a ball forward. Not a great pass, unfortunately. Campbell now with Costa Rica. Big tackle in the midfield from Weston McKinney. Pulisic has it down the near sideline. He's got three men to beat. Can he get it in? He's got two strikers at the top. Oh, oh. Altador will take a penalty. They're calling a penalty. Pulisic creates something out of nothing. The ball goes to the foot of Josie Altador for the winner. Can we win it? Two minutes into stoppage time. He sends it wide. Wow. Wow. What are we going to do with Josie Altador? Here comes Costa Rica trying to win it late. Big header out from the American defense. Tejeda in the game now. He tries to center it. Another big tackle from Weston McKinney. He has been all over the midfield. But Costa Rica recovers. Gets it to Matariza. Offside. Offside. Okay, 30 seconds to go. Looks like we're going to get out of here with a 1-1 draw. In the rain in Kansas City. Probably not what we would have liked. Would have preferred a win here. This keeps a lot of people's hopes and dreams alive. Now, the good news is I think Costa Rica and no, like, that's not possible. Uh, we play Jamaica next. I think Costa Rica might play Honduras next. So that will at least take Honduras out of the picture. Oh, well, they played Mexico this week, so they're probably out of the picture. Anyway, simply put, not good enough. Get out. Get the heck out of here. Let's take a look at these uh, score lines here. So, yeah, there's Honduras. They're officially out. USA, Costa Rica, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, still alive. Still alive. So I think they have uh, closed the gap with us. There's Jamaica. All right. So, wait, do all three of us have to go in the playoffs? What's this about? What's happening here? Mexico's qualified. The rest of us have to go into some sort of cockamamie playoffs. All right. We got to look at the rules here. I thought all three of us made it in. 
Top seed specific rules. Uh, no. Uh, e what are these rules? First place World Cup, second place World Cup, third place World Cup, fourth place playoff. That's what I thought. So maybe that's just saying that right now, all three of us are still in possibility to have playoffs because Jamaica has tied us up 15 points and Costa Rica is just one point back. So any one of the three of us could end up in this fourth spot. So it's going to come down to final game USA versus Jamaica. So I might save that for a special standalone episode because this is too nerve wracking to just to not have full highlights for that. So I think we'll end it there. Let's see. Is there anything else that we need to look at? Schedule-wise, you can see knocked out of the Gold Cup. This could have been what was Greg Berhalter's demise. Was losing to Trinidad Tobago in the quarterfinals of the Gold Cup. That's kind of a bad loss for USA. I mean, good for Trinidad. Good for them, but that's a bad look for Team USA um, to get knocked out. You make it all the way to the quarterfinals. You beat Jamaica, and then you lose to Trinidad. That's... That's no good. So we get the draw in our first game. And we might have to change things up versus Jamaica. We might have to use the old Inter-Miami attack. So we'll see about that. Anyway, we're going to end it there. So until next game, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>